that's a problem? Why is it important? Why it is that you're going to go about doing the research in the way you're doing? Um, how it is that the data that you gather or the information you're looking for will allow you to reach a finding uh, that you, you've got? What is your hypothesis if that's relevant for you in your particular um, uh, style of research? Um, yeah, don't assume that people know what you're talking about, but also don't assume that they're morons and then you have to explain, you know, basic words. Um, that's that's a hard thing to, to get, uh, but uh, yeah. So um, I'll, I think that, that that's sort of clear. Um, and yeah, and, and again, just that writing style, the, the best way forwards, instead of me or, or Julian saying what we think you should be writing, try and mimic the style of the writing that you're reading. Um, it's, it's sometimes funny that we'll read uh, research uh, at the end of the year where the students doing a humanities piece and they're writing in a sort of scientific manner or vice versa. Someone is doing, uh, you know, maybe research into a biological, um, you know, tech, bi you know, scientific, uh, you know, biological technology of some sort, and they're writing as though it's an English essay. Um, uh, try and so it might be a brilliant English essay, but it doesn't match chemistry. Uh, and so again, try and use that style, the sentence, the structure, the way they structure the the arguments and the writing style and the referencing technique also on the kind of research that you're reading. Okay. And the same goes for, for methodology as well. If you're if you've got a particular methodological approach, is it one that is used uh, within the discipline that you're 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 working within? So I think um, I think there was one student who uh, comes to mind who uh, they, they, they might be looking at sort of a scientific piece of research and they've and they've done an absolutely brilliant justification of their research methodology, except that it's actually for English literature. They're taking a methodology from English literature and they're applying it to biology. So it's really really well done. Like they've thought through all of these things. It just that it doesn't suit that particular discipline. Um, I don't think anyone here right now has has that problem, but um, again, that modelling what you're doing and how you're writing on the actual discipline that you're using and the research that you're reading, that's a really, really important thing. Um, sorry, Julian, I rabbited on. Um, move on to the next one. Feasibility. Um, this, this, this one, uh, we're at that pointy end where the next month, um, you're asked to go out there and really start jumping into this and trying to get into the into the into the body of your research. Ideally, by the end of the school holidays, at the very latest, you should have all of the information you need, all of the data you're going to collect, or all the components. And then next term, you'll be putting it all to so analysing the data, thinking it through. Uh, putting forwards your your final piece of writing and putting it all together. That's the goal of next term. So the next month, it's all about you carrying it out. And uh, you've done the SAC too. We need to just think very, very clearly about that feasibility. Are you really going to be able to get 15 participants or 300 participants or, 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 or whatever it is? Is that really going to be enough? What is enough? What will you need and, and how well you do it? Can you refine this in some way to make life easier for yourself to get the data you need to answer the question without going to 15 schools? Uh, because the chances are you're not going to be able to. Um, so, yeah, how, yeah. How, how what do you need to get and, and what can you do to ensure that it's not going to be impossible? And then you get three weeks later and you go, well, you know, all I've gotten is some emails from people saying, no, I can't do that and I've done nothing. Um, so just locking that down. Sorry, Julian. Yeah, just to reiterate that, it's it's hard to, it's it's a risk to, to depend on other humans. So um, <laughs> it's a good thing to do to depend on them, but um, you know it's gonna it, they might be having some other things going on in their lives and stuff like that. Um, and so there's a there's an excellent practicality of research that you'll learn along the way in being able to communicate with people and understand how they're um, approaching the research and and all that if you are using other human participants um, but you just have to be a bit wary of you know what can I do if I'm waiting for someone to return this or that thing what can I do at that stage 
or as Will was talking about before, do I have a plan B in the event that this doesn't come through uh, what I'm relying on? So I'll still be able to develop a really solid research paper at the end with still interesting discussions and still interesting collection of data. Um, but yeah, just be a bit wary of that, I suppose. Yeah. So just just again, you know, we're at the end of SAC 2. You've hopefully had a week. Come back to it. Have another think about what you're doing. You should have some fresh eyes uh, to think about it. Is there another way forwards that could really minimise the amount of effort and energy you need to put into it to get, the you know, minimal effort, maximal information in order for you to be able to write a, you know, absolutely fantastic uh you know research investigation piece so again on this front you know we're asking everyone to have a one-on-one -on -one chat at some point in the next uh week or so so if you're not sure you're thinking yeah, yeah i realize now that this is going to be too big um this will be a good thing to chat about um all right let's let's punch through oops now hang on i just oh hey um oh sorry i don't know if that's coming through is this what um, we should be focusing on now? Is that? Yep, I think so. Yep. I've just got an issue. I've got this little thing that keeps on appearing. Oh, there we go. I've got rid of it. Um, so should you be looking to support selected methods and methodology with some understanding of the literature in your particular discipline? We sort of talked about that already, I think. Is that is that what we were getting at there, Julian? Yeah, you should be looking to support selected methods and methodology with some understanding of literature in your particular discipline. Yeah, so often a lot of people were in the SAP too, were I think maybe just because we've talked about the background and the research problem a lot in SAC 1, they were able to do that in the first bit. But then when it came to selection of um, research methods and justification for that, there wasn't much literature that there was kind of ideas being thrown around, but there wasn't that backing of evidence from the literature. In this study, they do this for this reason. I'm doing this because of this reason. I'm going to do it this way. That kind of connection wasn't as evident um, as, the, or the literature wasn't as evident in the selected selection of methods compared to the background and explaining the problem. So that could be something, just we haven't had as much time on that. Um, so that could be something to work through in the coming weeks. When it comes to the oral, you'll be able to really nut that down um, yep. as well. Would another way of saying that, that you want to be able to justify from the literature how you're going to go about doing the research. It's not just, so there's one part is that, uh, that conversation about why the problem is important and how other people have dealt with it and thought about it and what's lacking or unknown, et cetera. But then there's the, well, I'm going to go and do this. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because um, this particular approach done by Marie or whoever it is uh, showed blah, 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 blah. And they did this particular design in a particular way and they were able to find out this. And, and, and so that's why I'm going in that way. So justifying the methodological approach you're using. So that's, that's, that's sometimes we find that people just sort of assume that we know why that would be the best way to go forwards. Um, and so you really need to be able to, and so that's, um, yeah, you'll need a paragraph saying, in this study, we've decided to use a double blind uh, test uh, in order to gather data because uh, in a controlled, in you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you'll be speaking to why that particular approach uh, will provide you with the, you know, maximum of objectivity, uh, you know, provide the kind of results that you want that will be as strong as uh, you hope it will be. And, and usually that justification will also be coming out of uh, limitations, okay? Not just limitations in terms of you're in VCE and you don't have much time. Don't bother talking about that at all because that's the same for every single student. Uh, and also for every single person who has ever done research, uh, they are time poor and uh, they don't have enough resources. Uh, so it's so you don't mention that. But limitations in terms of um, the kind of people you might be able to access and the kind of data you need. 
okay and you know ethical limitations as well which is what some people did quite well in in thinking about um yeah. but yeah what are the things that justify how you're going to carry it out so the last two points there I think lead into that. If you're not sure, the best way to go is to to go to um, studies in the general field that you're looking at and see how they see how they conduct their studies. Um, so you know, if I'm working in, if my question is to analyze media content, go into media studies. How do they? And what type of um, steps do they take? Um, what's their reason and theory for those approaches? You can start to tease that out a little bit, and that will give you a lot of um, a lot of substance to to your justification of why this and not that. Um, so yep. Yeah, just go go to the the particular discipline that you're working in. Maybe just browse around how other studies are thinking about their design and selection of methods and um, using that appropriately as you see fit. Yeah. Um, and just what what also have to, happens when people justify their research methodology, they talk in general terms. Uh, so you might find, you know, when you when, when students are confronted with the quiz, how do I justify why it is that I'm going to do ethnographic research, which will be um, open-ended interviews? Uh, and then they'll write something where they just sort of get a, a general statement about what ethnography might be and then say that it's different from scientific research and they think that's enough. So it's more about you being specific to the kind of information that you're looking for uh, and, and, and so, yeah, really pinning it down. So often people will generalise or write general statements that could apply to any research you're wanting to talk about your specific research, okay? So that's, if you read a sentence of your own and you're noticing that that sentence is so broad that it could refer to anything, then it might be time to rethink that and, and try and refine it down, okay? Um, yeah. Uh, hang on, I'm clicking. There we go. Uh, yeah, we're just reiterating for those of you, we've got a few students this year who are doing some uh, research involving participants, and we just want to make sure that we finalise the ethics. Uh, a number of you have submitted uh, ethics, uh, that, that ethics form from a few weeks ago. Um, we'd really like to sit down with each of you, and I think Julie and I have asked everyone to individually, one on one, or we, we're trying to do it together. Um, to, to have a chat and just to finalise and we'll put that uh, rubber stamp, uh, if you like, on the document so you can go out and, and get that get that ball rolling. Yeah, uh, so that's probably one of the pressing things. If that's, if that's some, if you're in that kind of situation, um, sooner you get that through and we have a little chat, I think the, the quicker that you can start to progress on to the next phase. Yeah. Uh, so that's something yeah. that's... You can do immediately, really, in the coming days yep. or next week. So what we want to do is, now that you've done the SAC 2, I know that many of you have done a consent form. I uh, just want to double-check that. Also, the kinds of questions you're going to ask, double-check those as well. And also, if you're planning to do an informal interview, for instance, uh, I know some of you are planning to do that, just thinking about what kinds of questions uh, and to make it clear, because you, you've got an ethical obligation to do no harm. Uh, it is astonishing. We live in a time uh, now where we're much clearer in terms of how easy it is to do harm, uh, and we really, really want to take that seriously. So uh, please just check in with us before you jump uh, and, and, and and send out your uh, surveys, uh, regardless, you know, it, you know, even, even a sur survey monkey on Facebook, I know some people are planning to do it. We just want to make sure that... Um, uh, we lock that down. Um, and just on, as an aside, so VCAR have, um, you know, they're really concerned that students, uh, are, you know, are, are following the National Code of Conduct uh, for, for uh, eth ethics in research. So we just want to make sure that we're we're on top of that, okay? Um, so, yep, that get in touch and yep. have a time to chat. Um Forward. What are we doing here? What to do now? All right. I think we've sort of, I suppose you want to go through the SAC2 results, have a chat with us uh, and 
really get the ball rolling. The, the goal in the coursework is for you to develop a timeline and a plan for what you need to do. Some of you, uh, you know, all of you actually put in your SAC timeline, thinking through the steps that you need to take. Um, uh, you might want to tweak that a little bit and just make sure that each week you're setting goals that you want to achieve to try and get make sure that by the end of the term, uh, you you have made the progress that you need to do. Um, I know at this time of year, in previous years, students find just a, a call to us each week uh, to, to have a chat really works. It, it, it motivates. We're happy for you to do that. Um, if you can, if you if you if you want to, you're welcome we'd, to call it. We'd also time. like to hear about your little breakthroughs as well. That you know, the little light bulb moments. Sometimes it's nice actually just to call us up and share that. Um, I definitely like to hear those little. It's going to happen a lot in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, those little kind of successes. It feels like a bit of a maybe. It feels like a bit of a hard long distance <laughs> marathon. Uh, at the moment, but I think in the coming weeks, some things will kind of perk you up and spark you a little bit. Um, yep. So just keep us keep us informed with that. We'd like to hear about that. Absolutely. And look, if you like, we said, you know, you will. Some of you will hit that that wall, and you know, you just I don't know what to do or how I can progress. That's when you need to jump on the phone. Um, and look, if if you do hit that wall and you just your brain goes completely blank, that might be the time to go back to your annotated bibliography review. One thing I've noticed in the past is that when students go back and read their own writing and rediscover those articles that they read earlier on in the year, it helps refocus and and bring you back to what you were doing. Sometimes when you're reading research, you, don't, you can't just read it once, you need to read it over and over again and each time you get a more full, uh, you know, complex understanding. So. That, that might be a useful thing. And given that we ask you to submit that annotated bibliography task, uh, doing that will really trigger you uh, to, you know, re refocus and and, and uh, get back into it. Uh, sorry, someone asked a question. Uh, Jessica, I think you said, uh, is it due week 16? Um, we, I think we're making it so it's the end of the term, so before the term holidays. Um, so week 16, I think, is in... Two, two, three weeks, sorry, two weeks time. I'm, I've, I've, my brain's gone blank. Um, but we will do it basically after you've done the oral, you should submit it then. So most students I've found in previous years submit it around the same time uh, and they actually use that as a way to prepare. They write that 2000 word piece and then from that they then, they're doing that organisation and then they'll use that to structure their oral. So uh, it's, it's, yeah, due by the end of the term uh, which is at the end of the term, uh, just before the holidays. Uh, so next, what do we got? Uh, what to do now? Sorry, we just said all that now. Um, if you're looking to do your, you know, action-based research, you're doing surveys or whatever it might be, um, have a chat to us first, make sure that we're, we're good on the ethics and then, um, it is the time to, to start hitting the ground and, and getting that out. Um, all right. And last thing, here we go. I just wanted to, uh, just talk very briefly. I don't want you to think too much about the oral cause it's not your priority. Um, we've got, you know, just under a month, uh, before that sack. Um, but, uh, sorry, I'm just going to get out. So the 16th, 17th and the 23rd and 24th of June is the if you go to that Google document, are the times available to select for SAC 3? Which is, yeah, it is um, one, two, a good three weeks away, three and a bit weeks away. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, hmm. oh, how old? Um, uh, sorry. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to get up the form. Uh, so if you do click on the link. Here we go, share screen. 
So this is the form. You'll have the, yeah, the dates are there. So Wednesday the 16th, Thursday the 17th of June, and then the following week, the 23rd and the 24th. We've got a couple of slots there. Um, again, just to reiterate, if those times or days don't suit, um, just let us know and we'll try and work out a time that works for you. Um, now, the other thing is for the oral, if you are thinking about the oral. Probably, sorry, asking, just a slight, you could probably critique our uh, survey there if you want. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what was your design? Um, what, you, what's your, what was your research, what was your question? I, I, you can't, in you can't defend the indefensible. Um, uh, but yeah, hopefully that's sufficient, but I hope you, hopefully you can see this. This is, uh, week 15. If you're wanting just to think a little bit now about the oral, um, there's a few pages here that'll hopefully uh, answer, uh, the, the, the key questions. Um, again, just to reiterate that the rubric, um, is really useful. It forces, it, it's almost a, a template unto itself of all the things you need to achieve. Um, and this gives you the rundown of what you need to be thinking about uh, and how you might approach it. Um, we we haven't in the past, I, I tend not to uh, have a didactic, you know, very, very clear template for what you should, how you should structure the oral. It should be organic uh, to, to what you're doing and how you're going about doing it yourself. We found again, that those templates tend to fail 50% of people. So it's easier to make everyone do it themselves. And when you do do it yourself, it, it forces you to think more clearly and it actually brings out the critical thinking in your own work a lot, a lot more. Um, having said that, there there is, um, when we've done the task, for the task where you're asked to uh, do the 2000 word essay, there are some ideas of how to set it out uh, and, and some possible ways to structure it. Uh, so you might want to use that perhaps if you're really desperate for a, for a structure. Um, but yeah, just have a look at the, we've got some ideas here of what you need to do, but the core, the core of the oral is here. You're going to, uh, provide an exposition of the research question and explanation of its significance, explain and justify your method and then respond to questions and challenges that will be posed by the, the, the two person panel. Um, and yep, absolutely. Yes. To cue cards, uh, you are more than welcome to use cue cards. And that is the same for the end of year oral. Also, um, you're allowed to go in and use cue cards for the end of year oral. And in case you haven't heard me go on about it, the oral, uh, has absolutely nothing to do with your rhetorical skill or how well, how good you are at convincing people that you're right. Your goal is not to be convincing or engaging. Uh, this isn't a debating contest. Um, this isn't a TED talk. Um, you're presenting research. You're presenting the best possible arguments and evidence to explain to people why we should think and understand and change our understanding uh, on a particular thing. So. Uh, we've had orals uh, at the end of the year, a student who did very, very well. They had severe anxiety disorder. They stood facing the wall uh, uh, away from the people. They ha actually had their back to the presenters and they got a very, very high mark because of what they were doing. So in case you were thinking that you've got to, uh, you know, have fireworks in the background and you've got to have some dances and, uh, you know, pyrotechnics going on, that's not necessary for this. It's about what you say and how well you say it and how well you argue for, for what you're trying to get across. Um, so, yeah, but again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, I'd we say we'd, we'd also probably have a, one of these online lessons dedicated to SAT 3 in the coming weeks. I don't know, next week, maybe not next week, is that I want to have it a bit closer to the date, but yep. I'd say the following week after that. Yeah, and everyone will get a chance to do a, a run through as well, if you so wish. So in the past, I've audited people's given some feedback on cue cards. Uh, people have had a run through of their presentation uh, and and sort of done a, a you know, a one on one uh, session. And then, yeah, so we'll go from there. So all of these things will occur. But um, again, that's sort of in the future for now, it's uh, 
it's uh, really getting stuck into the core bit of your research. What are your goals for this week? Uh, and what do you need to do in order to achieve that in short, so that you can go to the next step? Um, all right, I'm mindful of the time. Yeah, that's probably enough, unless there's anyone that wants to stick around to talk if there's a particular question you know, for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, hopefully that gives you an overview of what's just occurred with SAC 2, uh, what you can do now in the lead up to, to SAC 3 as well. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, if the, if you, just for those ethical um, considerations, if you are in that situation where we've invited you um, to meet before you conduct any human participant um, studies, um, please let us know a best time or day in, in your week um, and we can sort something out there. Um, I think that's all. Yeah. It's getting dark. Clouds. Yeah. <laughs> I can see people's background are fading to dark. So, um, all right. Call it a day. Unless there's, if there's anyone who wants to stick around, and ask particularly about their research in some way. There's pressing question or matter or something like that. We'll stick around for a couple of minutes. Um, but if you if you'd like to leave, that's that's perfectly okay as well.